Hello, my name is Nikolai Yusupov. I'm a paramedic in New York City. And today I want to talk to you about invasive modes of mechanical ventilation. And uh, I really feel people go uh, really, uh, I guess, uh, they start explaining the dials and show you the exact specification of every ventilator, which I think does not really give you a good understanding of how the ventilator actually works. So here I want to talk to you about the principles that if you understand them completely, you'll know how uh, all the ventilators that you will encounter in your line of work will work. So first thing I want to talk about is how uh, a normal person uh, get a breath uh, when we breathe uh, normally, spontaneously. So what happens is my diaphragm goes down, my ribs expand, what's called bucket handle movement. So like a bucket handle, my ribs expand, and my uh, sternum has a pump handle. So when my diaphragm goes down and my chest expands, I create negative pressure and the air goes from the atmosphere, which is 760 atmospheric pressure, down to my lungs. And that's how we get uh, uh, air into the lungs. It's called negative pressure or uh, uh, normal spontaneous breathing is uh, done via negative pressure. However, whenever a patient gets uh, delivery of gas through a ventilator, it's done through positive pressure ventilation. It's no longer a negative pressure. So it doesn't matter if you utilize a BVM or a ventilator, you'll be delivering positive pressure ventilations. So in order for you to understand positive pressure ventilation and understand how different uh, ventilators uh, uh, do that, I want to talk about uh, basic principles of mechanical ventilations that are applicable to all the ventilators. So you have three basic principles. You have a trigger, you have a target, and you have a cycle. So if you understand the trigger, the target, and the cycle, you understand the uh, three principles of all mechanical ventilations used today. So the first thing we'll talk about is the trigger. And here I have a suction uh, canister uh, uh, unit that we use, but this is a trigger. So imagine it's like a gun, right? And what happens when I press a tr trigger on the gun? Bullet comes out flying, right? So a trigger is, uh, initiates the release of the projectile. So imagine the ventilator has a trigger. And the term trigger is actually uh, medically sound and it's employed by uh, respiratory care and the physicians. So imagine you have a trigger, right? So whenever the trigger is utilized like this, right, the ventilator will deliver breath. So it's triggering the ventilator to deliver breath, right? So there's two types of triggers, right? One type of trigger is uh, machine uh, timer uh, does it, so it's called control. So control trigger, control trigger is when the ventilator uh, delivers a breath via a timer in the machine. So for example, if I set the respiratory rate at 12 breaths a minute, right, you have one breath going every five seconds. 12 times five is 60. So 12 breaths every 60 seconds or 12 breaths a minute. So the trigger is uh, controlled, right? So the, the machine doesn't care what you do, right? It will deliver 12 breaths a minute or one breath every five seconds, right? It's like, imagine a factory and on the conveyor belt, right? Uh, they tell you as soon as you turn on the machine, the machine will uh, stamp, let's say 12 bottles, right, in a minute, 12. No matter what you do, it will deliver 12. One, two, three, four, every minute. So this is control. It's not uh, affected by the patient effort. It's fully utilized by the machine, right? And it's fully uh, delivering the breath every five seconds, as we said, at 12 breaths uh, a minute. So that's control. Second one, the second trigger is assisted. So we have an assisted trigger. An assisted uh, trigger is basically done by the patient effort. And what that means is, whenever I create a negative inspiratory force, or what's called NIF, I suck on the tube, I go So if I have uh, uh, like an endotracheal tube in my, in, in my uh, uh, trachea, or I have a tracheostomy, I'm gonna create a negative inspiratory force. I'm gonna go right? And what it does, it drops the pressure in the circuit, or it uh, uh, takes away the flow. I reduce the flow by inhaling. And this signals the ventilator that uh, you have to trigger. So uh, assisted is fully patient effort and it triggers by reduction of the pressure in the circuit or by reduction of the flow of the gas flow in the circuit. So again, th those were the two types of triggers that all ventilators have. The next one is we have something that's called the target, right? And uh, this is the second principle in mechanical ventilation. And there's uh, two basic ways governing gas delivery. You have a, a, a flow target and you have a pressure target. And what do I mean by that? So in the flow target, I set a specific flow. So 
uh, I'm going to set either one liter a second, which equates to 60 liters a minute. So if you take a look at the ventilator here, right? So we're looking for B-Calc, and that shows us uh, 50 liters per minute. So if I adjust it, um, let, me, let me make it 60. Let me make it 60. 60. So we have B-Calc, 60 liters per minute. So if you have 60 liters per minute, it means one liter a second, right? So this is the flow, right? The second type of things uh, we have is a pressure, right? And the pressure, uh, uh, but we're gonna reach a certain pressure. So for example, so if we put a pressure of 20, right? We're gonna reach, the target is gonna be 20 centimeters of H2O, right? And this is gonna be our goal, governing gas delivery. So there's two types of targets, target one, is flow right target two is pressure right so uh and which you got a monitor so for example so if you set a flow target as with it at 60 liters per minute right or one liter a second right uh you have to monitor the patient's peak inspiratory pressure and plat so uh it's uh so airway pressure becomes the dependent variable and what it basically means is imagine you have lungs, right and i set a flow at 60 liters per minute or uh, one liter a second or 500 mLs per half a second, right? So I'm getting that. And if something changes in my lung compliance or my lung resistance, so let's say imagine my lungs become stiff, right? I'm still gonna deliver the same flow. However, the peak inspiratory pressure and plateau pressure are gonna jump through the roof, right? So what you gotta be do, doing whenever you are in flow, you have to monitor the peak inspiratory pressure and plateau because those are the dependent variables. However, if you're in pressure and you're delivering 20 centimeters of water pressure, right, to the lungs, right, so I'm getting that, and whatever the, the Tyler volume that it gives me, if my lung compliance changes and my lungs become stiff all of a sudden, right, uh, I have to monitor the tidal volume or exhale uh, tidal volume, and I have to look, so if my lungs become rigid and they not no longer expand, right, I'm going to deliver much less of a volume, of tidal volume. So uh, volume is the dependent variable and uh, very easy to think about it it's the inverse of the other so if you're in your flow you have to monitor pressure and if you're in your pressure you have to monitor volume uh so this is the target so uh and how does the ventilator know that uh for example like once i reach the target how to uh, cycle off how to cycle off so imagine this is the target right so if i have a gun i'm going to shoot at the target right i triggered the ventilator right and imagine we're doing flow. The flow is flowing and I hit my 60 liters a minute, right? I hit it. But it, if it's, imagine if it's a bullet, it could pierce this uh, uh, aim and it could go through it, go through the target, right? It could go through it. And I don't want to do that. Imagine if I'm a patient, I want to deliver 60 liters per minute. I don't want to deliver any more because I don't want to get over distension of the lungs. I have to have a method to tell the ventilator to cycle off or to stop gas flow. And what it's called, it's called the cycle. A cycle is the principle that tells the machine to turn the breath uh, off and begin exhalation or stop the insufflation or uh, stop the flow of gas. So cycle tells the ventilator to stop delivering the gas and cycle off into exhalation. And in the ventilator, on all basic uh, vents, we have three types. We have a uh, uh, volume cycle, we have a uh, time cycle, and we have flow cycle. And what does it mean? So, on a ventilator such as this, for example, right, I'm going to select same patient, right, and first we're going to go with uh, volume. So, if we have a volume cycle, it means here, right, as soon as the ventilator reaches 595 ml, right, it's going to cycle off. As soon as this volume is reached, it's going to tell the ventilator to stop uh, flow of gas and go into exhalation. Now, we have time cycle, right? So in this mode, right, the ventilator will deliver uh, the gas, right, until it reaches a specific time. In this case, it's 0 0.8 seconds, right? So as soon as 0 0.8 seconds is reached, the, uh, the cycle, the machine is going to turn off and go into exhalation. And the last one is flow. And flow is basically, uh, flow is the gas in the circuit. And what happens is as soon as uh, um, a patient uh, uh, takes out sufficient amount of 
flow or yes from the circuit, the machine knows that it has been delivered and it stops uh, further uh, flow of gas. So, um, and it's going to be X amount of liters, right? So, again, in cycle, we have three variables. It's reach a set volume, reach a set time, and then reach a specific uh, flow reduction. So, and in the cycle, again, we're going, it's going to tell the ventilator to stop inflow of gas and cycle uh, to exhalation.